Uh, I guess it's June 27th, 2014. Um, we're on our main farm here in Cashtown. We're getting ready for these weekend markets. We've got eight of them, five on Saturday, three on Sunday. Uh, Sandy's here working on cider, get it ready to take. Um, over here we have storage, if it shows up. Yep. Doors open because we, once a year, get everything out of there. We had to transfer it to the other storage and then clean that thing up and sanitize it. Uh, and then later we'll be taking stuff out of the other storage and put it in this one so we clean it up and sanitize it. So, kind of briefly, this year has been a strange one to start. Um, Sydney's upstairs talking to her loan officer because things started very slow this spring. We had a lot of cloudy weather. Everything came late because of the cold winter. Uh, the money has been slower to come in than normal. So we're going to have to borrow more in order to get through to hopefully the good times, but we aren't there quite yet. We did have a good asparagus crop. That finished yesterday. Uh, what we have at market tomorrow and Sunday will be the last of it for the year. Same with rhubarb. Um, we will be picking. We started blueberries, red raspberries, blackberries. Uh, we picked our very first peaches, which is all the way five crates, which means they, not everybody's going to get them, but that will start soon. Um, cherries, we've got a very poor crop this year. Mm, should be, figured in my head the other day, should have maybe $18,000 worth of cherries. We might have three. So, by being diversified, having 40 different crops, we can weather that storm, but it's a poor year for cherries. Uh, we have 300 trees. I guess we're going to plant another two acres to try to finally get enough cherries that we can get what we need to market. It'll be on another farm, another location. Sometimes different locations will perform differently, and hopefully that one will do better. If they ever come in, it'll be a gold mine for us, but that's the problem with cherries. There's many years that nothing happens. We're going to walk around and look at a couple things going on today. So it'll be a couple different segments. This is just the first. So let's walk down here. The short segment here. Katie wanted to start out back further to see how big this tree is. This is a chestnut, Chinese chestnut, not American. Um, they get very big. Our orchard is 80 years old. This was a tree that's younger that was planted here beside my grandmother's house. This does not get harvested. Um, if you do not spray these things, every single chestnut will have a worm in it. So, obviously here in town, we don't spray it. They all fall on the ground. They never, don't get, well, they get picked up and thrown away is what happens. But we don't harvest them. So people ask about our practices. We spray them twice a year to keep the worms out of them so you have, we have something to sell at the market. That orchard is another half mile up that way, and uh, that one's away from town a little bit. We can spray it. This one, because of its location, just uh, gets abandoned. So we're going to walk up here now and look at uh, some other things. That's it for that one. Uh, we've harvested some of our first garlic. We have it here on these shelves with a big fan. The other side we turned off so you could actually hear me. But um, this is in an old packing house, it's very dry in here, and that's the purpose, is to dry them out, get the moisture out of them uh, before we take them to sell them at market. I guess we're going to take the, some of these as is soon? I think so, yeah, we're going to take some fresh garlic to market this weekend. Okay, it'll be some fresh garlic. We won't have all the moisture out of it yet, as long as you use it soon, that's no problem. Um, if you want to storm, use them in the winter, you got to get the moisture out, so that's what's going on in here. And we're going to go over here and look at Mary Margaret's. Working on our flowers. Come on over here. She does 14th and U market. You probably know her from that. She does all the flowers. We keep them in this uh, little cooler here to keep them fresh. The weather's hot and of course they wilt. So she harvests them, puts them in there for a few days before she makes all of her bouquets. She's in the process. This is Friday morning about 9 o'clock getting started on the flowers for tomorrow's market. Can um, the two of you tell a little bit about the barn that we're in? The barn, uh, uh, it's before, it's pre-Civil War, it was a Confederate hospital after the Battle of Gettysburg. They, they retreated this way to go back to Virginia 
and some of the soldiers, Confederates, that could not make the, the journey, stayed, uh, came into this barn and crawled up here in the hay mile to, I don't know exactly, I know one of them lived because it, my grandmother said in the 75th anniversary he came back and showed his kids and grandkids that he was, this is where he came to after the battle to try to heal. So after that this was used as a packing house at one point. Um, originally it was a regular bank barn and the bank part means it's built on a bank so you got a ramp that comes up to it on the floor we're at. There's a layer of floor underneath where they kept cows and so on. There have been hay mows along the side and some of these old, uh, maybe you can see here, it's an old wooden peg barn. Uh, the wood would have been cut on this farm and, and brought in here and had a barn raising where they tilted all the walls up and then pegged all the everything together with wooden pegs. So it's very old. It's been subsequently supported with some more beams so that uh, it doesn't collapse. It's the so original it's, split level. It's the original, original split, split level. level. Yes, because, right, because you utilized the bank that you had to build it into. Mm -hmm. so it's hard to utilize these old buildings profitably, but we're using underneath for some storage. This level we got this old walk-in cooling room where it's used for flowers. That was the first cold storage the farm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that thing's probably 60 years old. And then uh, there's a loft in here that we uh, store empty containers and things. So we did just recently get some grant money to uh, redo the roof without a good roof on the building. The it's just going to fall down. So historic preservation. What is it called? <laughs> yeah, I'm not Some, sure. It's, not it, in other words, they do a lot of preservation for barns, barns so specifically to re redo the roof. Okay, we're right out behind our packing facility here, our main buildings. Uh, and it's good. We've been sorting cherries there today to get to, ready for the market. Um, behind you, you see. Yeah, we call him Dancing Man. We actually got two of them. That's the newest thing to try to keep the birds away. Our problem are robins. We're, this farm is in a town. It's covered with robins and I wish they'd eat only worms because when the cherries get ripe they'd love to eat the cherries. Uh, they are not afraid of people because they're in your yard all the time at your place. It's the same thing here so it's hard to scare them away. Um, these things, you've seen them at uh, used car dealers and stuff like that. To, we always thought to attract attention, but Cornell's been playing around and said they think they work for birds. So we got two of them and they seem effective. We'll reserve judgment. We've tried bird scare things with voice. We've sound, seen, tried visit, um, visual things. Of course, this is a visual thing, but it looks spooky to me. Uh, if you look way back, I don't know if you can see that rig back there. That's one of the orchards we just took out, a peach orchard. That big yellow machine. Can you see it through there, Katie? Um, maybe, maybe not. Probably like not. Anyway, we're in the process of taking that peach orchard out. And if you look over here, um, this trailer, maybe of interest, this is what we use to harvest peach and apple. It's got hydraulics on it uh, to make gentle on the fruit. It tilts backwards so that the bins can be unloaded with this chain. You, the hydraulics just walk them off of the trailer and then to load up, uh, you reverse it and the empties walk right on and it treats the fruit real gentle. All right, we're going on over here and maybe you can turn to show where the high tunnel is and then yep. we'll walk over there. All right. We keep beehives right in the middle of everything here because we've got crops all around it. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of bees if you're allergic, you should be, but these are honeybees. They're pretty tame. No one's got stung here. That's, it's not, it doesn't seem to be a problem. And I'm going to rotate around here. We're closer to the tunnel now. But I did want to mention this little plot here with strawberries. Last year, we have it in buckwheat. This year, it's, it's for cover crop purposes to enrich the soil. That'll get mowed down and cut into the soil to make organic matter. Uh, a couple things like buckwheat and rye. Um, exclude other weeds so it takes care of the weeds so that uh, when we go into our next crop we don't have to deal with them and the soil will benefit from the organic matter so you just lay it out a year into something like this buckwheat to get it ready for the next crop
All right, we're in this high tunnel now. Um, this high tunnel, there's a USDA grant money. We had thought about trying it. I had the paperwork on it for years and trying to find someone that would uh, devote the time to it. Anthony has an interest in it, so he's been jamming this thing full, which is what you need to do to make money out of it. It extends the season both earlier and later, and you can grow some varieties of fruits in here you can't outside, um, including these blackberries, which are the ones that come to market now. I think the variety Siskiyou, is that what you said it was? Yes. Katie? Right? Yes. Um, the raspberries, the same thing. I don't believe they're tolerant to outside conditions, but they do well in here. And they make very big berries and extend the season. Of course, the sides roll up and down. It's hot now, so the sides are up. You can see the open side. We've got uh, herbs in here. Uh, they like this environment. These are red raspberries that will be coming off later. Um, I think they're fall bearing, so that they haven't started yet. Right. There's green fruit on here, uh, but it, it hasn't started bearing. A little bit of green fruit. And then Anthony set up the strawberries. This is PVC pipe, and it's got water for irrigation and uh, feeding its nutrients. And the strawberries just hang off of the pipe, with this, and they're grown in this media. There's just a little bit of space here, so he tried to use that to uh, maxim maximize the utility of the thing. So, like anything else, it's it's kind of uh, we, we don't know in the long run how it's going to work. It's a little bit of trial and error. It doesn't make a huge amount of strawberries. It is making a lot of blackberries right now. And we know from experience last year, it makes a lot of uh, red raspberries. So the sides are open. The hives we saw, the bees come right in here and work the flowers. Without the bees, you don't have anything. And that's a bit in the news a lot, the problems with the bees. Um, so we'll move on to something else. You might even, I don't know if you can see out, but we got figs out here in pots. They haven't been very productive. They have not been productive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we play with things to see whether it'll work for us. It, it does not work for us. But you can see this is the figs forming right here. Is there any chance of seeing that? In there? Yeah, I can get that on. Okay. So that's the figs forming in here at the axis of these leaves. And uh, keep our fingers crossed again. It's we only like I think last year we harvested three half pints. Yeah, it doesn't make much, <laughs> not for us. I mean, if it really worked well, we'd expand that because there's a market for it, but we just don't seem to have the right climate. Yeah. All right, we're here in some blackberries. Um, we've grown blackberries for maybe eight, ten years, most of them on a permanent trellis. We have tried now this rotating cross arm trellis, and the way this thing works, um, whenever they're mostly in bloom, you take this and rotate it, so you can get that motion in there. All the flowers form on the up side of it. You lay this way out. I'm not going to do it anymore now. But then whenever you harvest, you flip it down and all the fruit hangs on the underside. It makes it easy to harvest. Uh, I will say though that this should be completely filled with canes. It is not. Remember here? It should be more like this one. This one did all right. This one is a result of winter injury. We've had a lot of winter injury from this cold winter last year. So a lot of those canes have been cut off because they died back. You might be seeing that in your own yard or around town. And we've suffered some from that this year. Uh, and the fruit, so the raspberries, some of them seem smaller than normal, but we're glad to have any because I've heard reports of people that just got wiped out by that cold weather. So actually in that way we're fortunate. So uh, you'll be seeing these in market, not, these not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> Little <laughs> but we, green. But we can go down and look at some ripe ones then as well. Okay. If we turn around here, Katie, if you can get that. Our shop's right behind us here. Steve's in there working on Oh, probably fertilizer uh, spreader, and uh, we put that up about five years ago, building for Hauser tractors and stuff. Disc is sitting there. Look at down here, 
the other dancing man and look at some red raspberries. Okay. Okay, we're in raspberries, black raspberries, and they've actually done pretty well. They didn't get damaged too badly. Uh, as I understand, raspberries from about our location north is where you see more of them, and our location south is where you see more red raspberries. Um, because a lot of these things, we have the climate that we can do both. So we're kind of a bleed over. It might not be the best conditions for either one, but we can, for instance, grow peaches, which is kind of a warmer weather crop, and apples, which is a colder. So we get both, which benefits us for going to farmer's market. But these black raspberries, which is an old time favorite, it's what everyone here grew uh, when I was a kid. There's very few reds around here. We grew reds because People wanted them in D.C. at market, and you can get prime oak cane bearing reds, so you have red raspberries, especially with the tunnel. I think we'll have them right to frost. And same this year, I think, with strawberries. Okay, Katie ran out of memory on her smartphone, so we're back to the black raspberries. As you can see here, there's three of them missing. They're the ones Katie and I <laughs> ate right after she ran out of Don't memory. Don't tell Sydney. <laughs> But anyway, what I was going to explain is, they call these the primaries. It's the uh, first bloom to open up. It's always the biggest berry on the end. It's the best quality. And um, since this is the first, getting ready for the first harvest on them, they're showing themselves. And they're the ones that Katie and I want to eat. Except that I love the flavor, but I'm picking uh, seeds out of my teeth for the next 30 minutes. But anyway. <laughs> um, so that's black raspberries. We'll get down here to red raspberries. Yeah, can can you, there's a lot of red raspberries on the bramble right now, but they're not red raspberries. They're just unripened on this bush. On this bush, yeah. yeah. They're red before they turn black. Yeah. So these are actually easy to pick, you know, when they're ripe. We have a little more trouble with the red ones. Um, that's a deal where you kind of get your fingers on them. Maybe I can demonstrate when you get down to it and pull on it. If it gets loose enough, it'll come right off. Um... If you if you take it when it's not mature, it'll be white inside. So I had a little more trouble with uh, determining when to get them off. We'll demonstrate that. Okay, we're at red raspberries here now. <coughs> Look down the line, you'll see there's skippers. There's places that plants are missing. Again, that is from winter injury. Plus, uh, the crop is just an apple orchard before we planted these. And it gets a little complicated, but there's diseases that get in the soil through those uh, the apple growing period. They will carry over to the plants and infect them, and they'll get unproductive and won't grow very much. So the reason this space here might not be too good is because that's where there was an apple tree last time. In between was the drive row, and those plants are healthier. Um, to explain how this works, there's two ages of plants here, actually here's one that died, see it there, but these are called floor canes, and these are primocanes. These are growing up in between the floor canes, they will not make berries till next year. So what you harvest is a two year old cane, the first year they grow, the second year they make the fruit. And after this is done we will cut these off. You can see they're yellowish looking and they start to decline as soon as you get the fruit off of them. They get whacked off. These get tied back to the wire again and it's all regenerated. The next year another primocane comes up in the center and you harvest this one. So you just keep rotating that around. Now there are two kinds. Um, the other kind is uh, a primocane bearing. They come later in the fall. Those grow up and make fruit all in the same year. Uh, and then you cut the plant down and there's nothing there. And the next year they come up again. I, I will say that a lot of those late red raspberries, growers have taken out because of the problem with spotted wing drosophila, an invasive fruit fly that we have now. We haven't seen any this year yet. As we get further along the season into August, September, the later you get, the more of them are around and the more trouble they give us. So some guys are only growing these early producing reds 
so they don't have to deal with those late. We're still fighting them so we can try to keep raspberries to our customers right through the season. Uh, and we can go look at some of those primocane bearing and some blackberries down here. Okay. It's okay. hot out here so I changed my big hat. Um, these are primocane bearing, fall bearing raspberries. This plant grew up this year. There was nothing here when we started. came up. Of course it's a perennial so the roots are down there. It expresses new shoots and then they get to a certain stage, a certain time of the year they start making fruit and flowers. And there's plenty of bees in here working this morning. But you can see behind it the uh, floor cane bearing. Uh, so you can see the difference. These are shorter plants. Our pickers don't like them quite as much. They've got to bend over further to do their picking. <laughs> it's nice to have them up here at Chestnut. But we consider them valuable so we can uh, carry over that harvest right in through the fall. And we do have primocane blackberries too. Right? These are primocane bearing black raspberries. Blackberries, excuse me, blackberries. They grow up and make fruit all in the same year. You can see they're in flower, there's no mature fruit here. They're also thorny. <laughs> <laughs> all the other ones are thornless. Uh, these are a booger to pick. Everyone comes back bloodied up whenever they get done picking these. They make big, beautiful berries, but they're a problem. So we got one row of them we're playing with them. I don't know if we're going to continue doing that or not. They keep uh, doing research and developing new varieties. Now they have some of these that are thornless. And after giving up a pint, maybe <laughs> every year <laughs> to the thorns, we'll end up taking these out and putting it and trying those. While we're here, I'll also show you uh, this irrigation, we have under, underground irrigation lines buried. Uh, this is an injector port, so um, the water comes out of that line and through these tubes each row, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, or the soda bottle beside <laughs> it, but anyway, it's the real world. Um, there's a line to each row, and it's got emitters inside so it drips the water onto it. It's very efficient. Um, this whole gizmo is set up so that we can put fertilizer in. You put a contraption on here, cut the flow off to the regular lines and let it flow through a Venturi system that sucks your fertilizer out of your bucket and puts it in with the water. It's a very efficient way of feeding the plant because it puts it right in the, on the roots. It's about like uh, having an IV in the hospital. It's given it right to the plant, a measured amount and uh, very accurate. Um, I don't know if you can turn around, you might have to move, but these are the old permanent blackberries. These are all thornless. This is the first one, it's a Rapaho. Um, very tasty. They got a citrus like flavor to them. I actually like eating these. I'm not a great blackberry fan, but I like these. But their yield isn't great. There's some other varieties down here that make a huge amount of fruit. These we leave a lot of canes in because they don't grow very big. This is next year's cane. It's the same system as most of the red raspberries. It's a two-year system. This is where the fruit will come next year. It has no fruit on this year. That's the prima cane. This is the floor cane. After it's cropped, it'll get cut out. These will be tied fast for next year again. So we have Abarapaho. We have Chester. We got two rows of that, two rows of Chester, and two rows of Triple Crown. These give berries about two or three weeks each variety. The difference of Triple Crown will give you fruit for like four to six weeks. It goes on forever. Um, and you can see the blooms later on them. They just make a huge amount of fruit. Every year we get worried that the weight will be so great that we may it may break down the trellis. It hasn't happened. Of course, that is a disaster when it does. So. I can see we need to go in here and start pruning. You can't let these get so tall. You want to cut these off, keep that trellis down. Otherwise, this, they end up growing like this. They'll come there, go all the way down to the ground and peg themselves fast. Uh, it gets to be a jungle, a terrible jungle. So we have to keep cutting them for next year to a height that's easy to harvest. And I think that's uh, what I got for today. All right, thank you.